this is an important compound to memorize, the smallest possible ketone. So basically it's re replacing the oxygen that we have. Right, and we need to come up with a series of reactions that explain how that happens. We don't really need to go through the mechanism, we just have to explain how this would happen in terms of reactions. So that O would have to leave? Mm -hmm. Right. So it would have to be protonated or somehow like fall off? Right. So would it first be protonated by like the H2O18, whatever, and then the H2O18 would then attack that carbon and then it would steal hydrogen from that and become H2O and fall off and then that one would stay? Okay, I think you're, you're basically working it out. So basically you're trying to go through the mechanism for that. Now one thing to say is this would not just steal a proton from here because this is not that basic and this is not that acidic. So since you guys want to go through the mechanism, we'd have to assume this was under either acidic or basic conditions. Um, although they didn't say, did they say treatment of propanone? We, have to, we should assume there's a little bit of acid or base to get this reaction uh, happening here. But we don't really need to go through the whole mechanism. Um, basically, this is a hydration, right? So let's just draw the product of hydration. We don't need to go through the whole mechanism. What would the, be the product of, hi, of doing this hydration? You would have... With H2O18. Right. Usually you would have two alcohols, mm -hmm. which I'm good, but you still have two. Right. I know, but I mean, like, usually, right now we're ending with that. That's good, except that we should show that one of the oxygens will be labeled. Oh, wait. So that's your usual So here we got this. I, I think you kind of worked out in your head what, what's going to happen here. Again, we don't actually have to go through the whole mechanism, though. So here would be the, um, what our intermediate. This is just our normal hydration product. This is not labeled because it came from the original acetone, and this is labeled because it came from the water. Now, was this a, is this a reaction that is going to be going to completion or an equilibrium reaction? Equilibrium. So we'll draw the arrows like this. That means we're actually going to be bouncing back and forth between, between these two compounds. Well, what's going to happen when we bounce back from this over to here? Well, one of these two OHs has to leave. Now, sometimes I suppose this will leave, and that'll just get us back to our original starting material, but it's just as likely that this is the oxygen that's going to leave. And if this oxygen leaves, when we get back to the carbonyl, we're going to have a carbonyl where the oxygen has where the oxygen is oxygen 18. Is it, okay, but we don't need to draw the mechanism, but I just want to know, is it the, that normal OH steals an H from the OH 18? The only way to see what the mechanism, to, to, uh, uh, until we say whether it's acidic or basic conditions, we can't really say what the mechanism would be. So, um, but if it was, say, under acidic conditions, um, we would start, if it was acidic conditions, we would start by protonating this oxygen. Yeah, but how do you know that like you're not going to be left with the other OH? That's the thing, it's going to be both. Oh, you're going to get both. Yeah, so we would expect that after we make this intermediate, sometimes it'll reverse and give us back the original oxygen, but sometimes when it reverses, we'll be left with the oxygen 18. Expect to end up with both of these. Uh, so you don't draw like this row, you just do like this with H2O and this with H2O. Put H2O18 in on the other side, it would just be H2O. Right? Yeah. yeah. These are all equilibrium reactions, so we would expect that uh, ultimately we would have all of these in the mix. If you want to get mainly this product though, you can do that by adding excess um, H2O18 or by maybe using this as the solvent. If you're using this as the solvent, then you ex would expect that um, you would be almost always replacing the original oxygen with an oxygen 18. Okay. The, the main thing they're testing here is they're testing whether you realize that these reactions are reversible. The main thing they're testing, they, the main thing they want you to say is that the reaction is reversible. So after the water joins, 
Uh, after, we, after we lose the ketone, it's possible to get back the ketone. But when we get back the ketone, it's possible that we might end up with a different carbonyl oxygen than we started with here. Okay. Okay. So, in this, like, do you have to explain it in words now? Explain. They say it in words. Okay. You were also asking about the mechanism. If you want, we can go through the mechanism for this. No. So. Do we need to know this? Actually, that would be a good mechanism to know. So it, it's very quick. So first of all, this would protonate. This is, I'm assuming that we're under acidic conditions. The water will fall off, leaving a carbocation. Right, and we might as well show this oxygen kicking it off. Yes. And you have to put the 18 on that Ah, that's right. So I should show this is the 18. Good point. So again, we're assuming these are acidic conditions. And then just have a double bond now. It's a pi bond. However, we can also draw it as a carbocation. Yeah. So uh, you could have drawn it as a carbocation. It's probably a little more convenient to show the carbonyl forming in this step. And then now the H falls off. That's right. Maybe a uh, water molecule can pick it up. Some water molecule can pick that up. Falls off. Or uh, if we were using, or the conjugate of whatever, the conjugate base of whatever acid we're using could pick that up. So that's the acid catalyzed mechanism that takes us back to where we started. The main point this was testing again is that we should recognize that hydration is reversible. So even though we lose the ketone, we can easily get the ketone back. So which one are we looking at now? How the chromium ether would react with the nucleophile or base. So here's an ether. First of all, how would we protonate an ether? What should we add if we want to protonate Adding this ether? some sort of acid? Yeah, so we'd add some acid, maybe sulfuric acid. And then they're basically asking, what are some likely further reactions this could go through? So if a base attacks? then it would probably just steal the H because that's what bases like to do. They like to deprotonate. Right. So. Steal which H? Yeah, so a base might si simply steal this proton. However, that wouldn't be very interesting because that would just get us back to where we started. Um, is there anything more interesting that a base could do? It could steal an H from an alkyl. It could. Oh, could it attach to the O and break the bond? Attach to or the O. Is that what the nucleophile would do? Maybe we should have started with the nucleophile. Okay. So let's start with how would a nucleophile react here. Nucleophile would attack the alpha carbon next to one side. Right. So it would attack, let's say, this carbon. And since this is a positive, it would leave. OK, good. leaving an alcohol. And whatever type of compound yeah. this is. OK, so that's the most important thing that we could have happen here. So I, I think we talked about last time why the nucleophile would not attack the oxygen. Did we? Um, 
or, or did we talk about that together? Um, so who's the electrophile here? It's not the atom with the positive charge, it's the atom that's next to it. I mean, we talked about that last term. Um, so the idea is uh, if you have a positive charge and an incomplete octet, you're an electrophile. But if you have a positive charge and a complete octet, it's the atom you're attached to that's the electrophile. Well, that's what we have happening here. This oxygen has a complete octet. So what the positive charge is making this oxygen into a better leaving group. And it's making this electrophilic over here. So um, we got that reaction. Basically, uh, the only thing that you're likely to see with a positive charge in an incomplete octet is a carbocation. So when carbocations have positive charges, they're electrophiles. But otherwise, positive charges usually make things into good leaving groups. And the thing that they're attached to is the electrophile.